Excellent, thank you. So our mission at Vinova is to increase the number of knowledge, new and knowledge intensive growth companies that are addressing the major societal ch challenges and are contributing to growth and innovation in Sweden through excellent incubation support. And we give priority to incubators that show quality and performance in developing business ideas with unique knowledge advantages and with the potential to grow businesses on international markets. And we can continue with excellent next slide, yes. And the Swedish National Incubator Program ranks as world-class and today the program involves 32 quality assured non-profit incubators all over Sweden. And the individual incubators are scoring high in international listings, and several of the incubators rank among being the best in the world. And Vinova finances established incubators that have global sustainability goals according to Agenda 2030 in their focus, and a quality perspective as clear driving forces both in the selection of companies, but also in development of incubated companies. And we see sustainability and diversity as key components and catalysts for innovation. This picture is to give you a flavor of the development of the incubator program over the years. So uh, the program started in uh, with the pilot phase in 2003-2004. And uh, here we collected experiences and set the directionality for the program. And the program actually kicked off in 2004. And during this phase, there was a focus on developing the Swedish incubator infrastructure and to develop incubation management profession. And after that, uh, in 2016, a new program period started. And during this uh, phase, uh, there were several new things introduced. And one important component was actually the in incorporation of peer learning between incubators. And uh, it was started up here in this phase and implemented by the incubators themselves. There was also a change in the funding focus and the funding mechanisms. So here in this phase, the state aid uh, now became delivered directly to the startups and not to the incubators. During this phase, there was also a start of uh, some strategic program, uh, sorry, projects uh, that now has become established uh, and uh, examples of two of them are the yes way that is actually uh, 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 have a focus on and uh, to uh, create a more diverse and inclusive startup community with a focus to provide women with new kind of support tailored to the particular needs. But also another project started that in, in that phase uh, as a project that is Ignite Sweden that aims to make and foster connections between startups and established companies and public organization. Now we're in a program phase uh, starting in, in 2021. Uh, and in this phase, we there was an, an, an introduction of co-incubation. And I think we will talk a bit more about this later on. So I will not dig into it now. And another important component that uh, was introduced was innovation readiness levels and uh, with sustainability as one perspective. And during this phase, sustainability as value creation became fully integrated in the program. Here also was the uh, introduction of a quality seal of the incubator operations. So you need to qualify to get funding and the funding size is determined by the company portfolio. And all over during the years, the number of incubators have grown and we can uh, change to next slide. And now the uh, present portfolio uh, of incubators, there are 32 incubators in the National Incubator Program. Those that are enrolled at the moment, they cover a wide range of thematic areas from highly specialized incubators in the fields of space, food, textiles, 
to general broad spectrum incubators and deep tech focused incubators. We can take next slide, I think. Yes, thank you. So uh, the program targets knowledge intensive startups um, with these four components. That it needs to, the startups need to have and possess unique intellectual assets that give the company a necessary time advantage. There needs to be an attractive offering that has the potential to become substantially better than the competing offerings, offerings on the selected market segment. And uh, the company needs to have a focus and uh, being able to create an impact on society and uh, have sustainable business according to Agenda 2030. And then it needs to be a potential to have a scalable business model uh, with international uh, covering. We can continue to the next slide. Yes, great. So just to give you some number, the National Incubator Program at a glance and in the uh, turn of the year 2022-2023 looked like this. There were about 650 companies in the current uh, National Incubator Program portfolio. And about 4,000 ventures are assessed and there are 350 accepted ventures. And there is a focus on gender equality in the program. And we can see that uh, with structured approaches and methods and processes, we have some nice figures. We have, we see an increase in female board representation growing to 29%. We see that there are uh, females uh, uh, re representation in uh, in 43% 40 of the accepted ventures and the female founders, the number of that has uh, grown over the years. And a uh, very positive thing is that we see that in the incubator program, those companies that are there and have female team and mixed team, they actually attract more uh, venture capital investments than the average company does. And we also see some number of revenue and investments attracted all over. We can go to the uh, last slide, I think. I would like to uh, here just highlight some of the success factors that we see uh, with the National Incubator Program. And we will come and discuss that a little bit later on. Um, throughout the years, we see that one, one important thing has been the community building that we have. There is a strong community, trust, support, and openness with the integrated peer review processes and more importantly, through co-incubation. We also see that the through the National Incubator Program, there this is actually an entrepreneurial factoring, fostering serial entrepreneurs, uh, making a large contribution to the national economy. Throughout the years, there has been a collaborative, continuous improvement of the operations, and it has been uh, been uh, the improvements have been made through top-down procedures, but also bottom-up initiatives. So it really has been a way of working, and thereby integrating new processes and operations, like uh, some examples here I gave you, the Yes Way and Ignite Sweden. And this is actually has been a strategy from the start to be working bottom up and top down and doing this all together the, uh, in the National Incubator Program. I will finally and lastly, I will also say that the success factor has been that the incubators are strongly integrated in the regional development and ecosystem uh, um, and creating uh, innovation and regional strength they have been strong ecosystem catal uh, catalysts. So uh, that was the last slide and the, the short introduction to the program. Thank you very much. And I'll give the word back to you, Maria. Thank you so much, Anna. And for you who joined us, I just want to ask uh, you, Anna, you mentioned that you are in uh, Hello Tomorrow in Paris right now and I know that there are a lot of the incubators that are a part of it can you just set us a uh, stage how is the conference and what about the Swedish startups uh, are they doing good 
at yes. hello tomorrow. Can you see them? Can you feel them being present? Oh, yes, they are there when we have the Swedish tech arena down there. And we see that it's a vibrant startup scene. And we see that the Swedish uh, startups are getting traction and attention. It's a very positive thing. And we have many incubators sending the startups down here to this important arena that are attracting investors from all over the world. So it's great to be here with the companies. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for setting the stage and giving us all the picture uh, about the Vinovas part of the National Incubation Program. And now we will continue to just set the stage of how we work close together. And I think most important that you mentioned building the community of trust throughout Sweden and working closely together. So with that said, I'm going to just give you a short presentation about the Swedish Incubation and Science Parks Association, how we work together uh, and also uh, let Katarina in and really to give you all some examples how we work in practice. So we will go deep dive into what we do together so you can give some inspiration and information about that. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'm going to share with you a presentation. Uh, give me just a second. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to just ask us or give us a shout out in the chat room. And now hopefully uh, we will continue with the ecosystem in Sweden. Uh, so we have a lot of university close incubators and triple helix based science parks and private accelerations all over Sweden. And just to highlight some numbers again, uh, we have our own association. And I would say why I go up uh, and go to work every day is to actually tackle the global challenges that we are ahead of us. And I think many with me believe that our innovative deep tech startups and the startups community together can, if we join forces with the academia, with the private sector and the public organization, can do some difference together. So we are trying to join forces with the examples that Anna already mentioned, for example, Ignite Sweden. I think we will highlight that some more later on. Uh, but together we are 32 incubators, 31 science parks, and more than 5,000 companies and 70,000 employees uh, that are joining in this association. So it's, uh, it's a non-profit economic association the Swedish Incubator and Science Parks Association. And uh, if we just set the stage here, uh, we have a lot of ideas that are coming from university spin-offs, company spin-offs, and of course, idea owners from uh, the private sector. In Sweden, we have what we call innovation offices and holding companies that are guiding the really early ideas. When they are coming to the next phase, becoming startups, we have both pre-incubator and incubator, where me and Katarina, uh, as part of uh, Uminova Innovation, the incubator up north in Sweden, and Leeds, you will tell us more about that, Katarina, is a part of where we have both the pre-incubation phase and the incubators. So we work with the business development, the financing, the validation, together with other actors uh, around the regional support system and the national one. Uh, and we have in Sweden what we call the sustainability and readiness levels, uh, as Anna mentions, that we try to work together with tools that help us to measure the progression of our startup scale-ups, but also to, on a national base, help them to find customers with Ignite and to help them to set the team with STEP. These are some tools that are part under the CISP association. Not going to deep dive into this, I just want to take the next part where we are uh, actually trying to uh, be the excellent incubation, the best we just can. Uh, and we screen more than 4,000 ideas per year and except about 350. And about a quarter of that is uh, ideas from the industry and a quarter from the academia. 
And most of them are nonprofit. And I think that's why we can build that level of trust and sharing is caring is a mentality that we always work together. So what we do, and I think that's kind of unique is that we co-incubate together sometimes. And we will deep dive into some example how that can actually happen. Uh, and I just want to invite you, Katarina, and Anna, of course, with this picture. This is a picture from one of our trips that we were on uh, last fall uh, to uh, Silicon Valley, where we have a learning trip together. Uh, so we were some of the uh, about uh, Vinova was a part of it, of course. Uh, and we also had some incubators uh, joining forces to learn and share from the ecosystem in Silicon Valley. Uh, Katarina, if you would have some reflection of this learning trip, what would that be? Your energy when you came out and maybe some examples what it gave to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we came out of that journey really really uh, high energetic uh, both because we have learned a lot from each other but also from learning from from the silicon valley part of course and sometimes i feel it can be hard sitting in sweden and getting information uh, from abroad that oh maybe you should send some uh, companies over here because we can help them that's really hard to know in what phase they should be to be there but when we were there, we actually saw and felt, uh, okay, the timing for this acceleration phase or for a company going to a program in the US, you can feel when it's time to send them. And we actually got in one, one of our companies into an accelerator in, in the US after that trip. And that has really made it go off for them so that was really brilliant only that specific was worth the whole trip uh, but it's also quite hard and and uh, a lot of work planning such a trip for one single incubator so being able to that CISP as the association can take that responsibility and we can ship in for maybe five or seven incubators and science parks then we save a lot of, of time and money with that. So mm. it's both saving time and money, and it, we, we get out more out, out of it when we do it together, I would say. Mm. I totally agree. And I think that was an amazing result, and it was kind of really uh, a short period of time after the, the trip that you actually went again with just the company and the business coach. So... Yes. Uh, a really really nice so that's just one example of just doing we really need to be there and things happened uh, yeah. so if we just take some example because I think that's what this is all about the why uh, the Swedish system is really good is that we join forces uh, the CISP Association, which I work for, uh, but I also work uh, for Uminova Innovation. Uh, I can really see that we work together to develop new things together with the members. Uh, and uh, you, Katarina, as a part of a member uh, incubator in the CISP Association, uh, we do the something called peer review or peer learning every third year and it's kind of a transparent 360 re reviews with peers uh, and in this peer reviews that includes both the management the team in the incubator the board but also the startups we really get the picture and we deep dive into maybe some hard topics uh, and we try to also tailor it to incubators depending on if we are in specific areas and fields. Uh, we have recently done that, Katarina, uh, together with two other incubators. Uh, what would you say your learnings, if you look at the peer review perspective, what gives it to you as an incubator? Mm, I would say we did it together with Sting and Chandra's Ventures and you with Uminova mm -hmm. hat on as well, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say it's different parts. It both gives energy in, but it 
it makes us all better because when we come to Sting and they are really, really transparent or Chalmers, uh, they are really transparent of how they are doing and how they are working. So we can deep, deep dive in how they actually do their processes. So uh, both that they can say, we need help with this and we can come in with, with uh, suggestions for how they can do better. But we also, when, when they came to us, we can also get help out of, oh, why are you doing this? Uh, because we thought that was the best, uh, but you might be doing this in that way. So it's both about getting better ourselves and get inspired from others. But yeah. I would say this is not nothing we can do in a short way. This is because of we have we have had the the uh, national incubation program for a long time, so we have built up trust. Because mm -hmm. what we saw when we were in, in Silicon Valley, uh, we shared a lot of things with them there. But when we called them up and said, "Oh, do you want to do a peer review?" and um, can we deep dive in your processes? Then it's more about ah, maybe that's really really a lot harder. And I think mm. that's because we don't know each other. We haven't built up that trust that we mm. we have done within the program of Sweden. And mm. I also say that about the that we do uh, we incubate the same companies together. Uh, yeah, the co incubation. That's because we put the start. Yeah, we we put the startup in the center. I would say, and we are mm. we all agree of how can we get the startup accelerate as fast as safe as possible to get mm. them to a success and and if we all have that context and that mindset then it's quite easy actually mm. Mm. i agree and uh i think i think the peer review and what you men mentioned the the level of trust to to really share and the outcome of a peer review it's it's not that you have been sitting down for three days uh, because it's a full day work yep. and it's uh, it's work before and after it always the outcome is that you are sharing something can I borrow that document can we copy that can we do the same thing it's always something new that actually develops your uh, mm. your incubator yeah so the peer review is one part but if we continue uh, also taking the next part is is the shared learning uh, actually this week we had a shared learning uh, just a lunch seminar with more than 50 people sitting throughout their lunch sharing about how to measure and um, we also have physical meetups uh, and these online meetups and we mentioned the international travel uh, and also yearly conference. But it's it's always what we need. Uh, the National Incubator Program takes in from us as incubators. What would you say your biggest learning in the last year, Katarina, from these learnings or these uh, seminars? Can you mention some that you feel this is really valuable for you? as a manager or maybe for your team as business developers? Yeah, I can mention a lot. Uh, <laughs> I know that we have shared how we work with, with sustainability uh, within a program or project that was funded by Vinova together with others. Uh, so I think that was really valuable. Uh, but for me, it was also one of the learnings that we have a lunch seminar around um, how to secure that we work with the right companies and that we don't get in companies that uh, don't have uh, the right uh, oh, that, that we don't uh, support maybe criminal criminal activities with, yeah. Then, yeah. yes mm. so that was a really great one with three I, I think it was three uh, incubators and science parks that shared how they work with that that mm. was really good Mm. So, so just to set the context here, uh, that could have come out from how do we secure which kind of startups we are working with in an incubator. Mm. That might rise up from one of the incubators and then we take that as a topic, try to find out throughout Sweden who can share some learnings about that. Uh, and then we get uh, the lunch online seminar. So this 
practice how we work throughout the year with the national incubator programs. And the result is that we meet in person. I think that's also really important to build trust with different types of meetings. It could be for the management, it could be for the business development, communication, community managers. So we have different types of meetings, but we also have these open online conferences or meetings uh, that happens throughout the years. But as we said, it fosters really the trust and building a strong community about the mindset sharing is caring. And also we do a lot of cooperation uh, together. Um, just to, so we take the next one is to develop things together. And uh, both Minova and LEAD was a founding partner of Ignite Sweden with actually what was a small project uh, funded by Vinova uh, from the start. Uh, and it should be at least three incubators that develop something together. That is a really crucial need. And if we take Ignite as an example, it was all about that uh, we saw that it was difficult to find the right customer at the right time for our startup in our regional context. We need to look all over Sweden. And on the other side, that we saw that the large corporates in Sweden was kind of not really good enough of working with our startups to verify early on. And Ignite was funded from uh, both sting uh, things and lead uh, from the start. How, what would you say you are really one of the leading star at lead to start these development projects? Can you tell us a little bit about your thoughts about that? Yeah, I would say it's, it's when we see a, a big problem that might be too big to solve ourselves. Again, you are never the strongest when you are alone. Uh, so then you grab a couple of your friends out there and start building a project. And with Ignite, which is a really, really good example, we saw that it's really hard for the startup, as you said, to get out and get their first customer. And it's really harder, even harder to, to, to get a, a big corporate at, you, at your first customer because it's hard to get up to the right level uh, with the discussion. Uh, so we saw that and then we started to, to build the project around Ignite uh, both, from both sides, discussing with the corporates as well as with the startups. And it became really big. Uh, but it's the same with, uh, we did it with the um, sustainability as well, mm. where we saw that uh, it tended to be like a side track within the development process. And we're all really good in... in uh, develop business development for startups so we saw okay together we should put in the sustainability within the business development process and get it into to every single part of the journey so we did that together with a couple of other incubators as well and then we spread the word i know that martina from my team she had had uh, like a training for a couple of uh, business coaches around sweden around that mm. so that's really a great way of, of you're not you don't need to do everything yourself mm. when we go together it's it's really great and I think uh, for me it's that Sweden isn't that big of a country uh, so no. we need to be smart with our resources of course and uh, it's I think if we use the word logum it's just the right amount of incubators and uh, that could work together. It, it's possible, it's doable. And it's really building uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, I don't only have my colleagues uh, at Uminova Innovation. I feel like I have colleagues all over Sweden. Uh, but it's also important to, to really see the way that CISP, our uh, association can act as a platform uh, to spread the words and get all these really good uh, projects out quicker all over Sweden. So it's used. It's not only something that Vinova was funded from the beginning and just the two incubators are using it. It's really so much easier to, to make it better uh, if we use it all the time. 
Um, but we have a lot of uh, really interesting projects going on. And Anna mentioned also a uh, step for team building and the, the Yes Way uh, and Ignite. It's some of the biggest one, but it's it's happening uh, a lot of this joint development projects. Uh, so the next thing I want to just highlight before we open up for uh, discussions it's uh, we 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 have already talked about this but if you Katarina uh, could I mean you are quite one of the biggest uh, incubators you're using I think almost all of these uh, tools that we have in our toolbox uh, what do you see as our future uh, needs of uh, creating uh, tools together do you have anything in mind or is it something that you want to share if you look at these how you work with them or is it hard or difficult to incorporate them in your organization as you say we are working with more or less everything that's up here on the screen so <laughs> i fully agree that has been great uh the next upcoming mm, great question uh Lead was actually appointed as uh, Swedish, the Swe uh, Sweden's choice to NATO Diana Accelerator. And it's a lot of discussion about dual use. So maybe that's a topic that we should discuss how we can, I think it will, um, we need some other support around that. Uh, so maybe we can have a project around that together, a couple of incubators and science parks together, I would say. Uh, I, I got a question in the chat also, uh, and I think you mentioned the Diana. Uh, so do your process allow incubation of business ideas that builds on base IP that stems from other European countries than Sweden? That's an interesting question because some of us are really regional uh, and some are national, uh, but do we go abroad? Do you want to uh, answer that, Katarina? I don't know if, if it's me or Anna who is the best, but maybe Anna I would also. say yeah. that within the NATO Diana, we will uh, we will get companies from the NATO countries outside Sweden. So if we will be part of that, we we need to to be able to take care of those kind of companies as well. Mm. Thank you. Do you have what any do you say, comment Anna? to that, Anna? Well, I think I see uh, that the, the next phase and the next development of the National Incubator Program is really to integrate the international scene more than, than we had previously. And then those several aspects come into place that we need to consider. And uh, of course, IP is one of them that we need to consider in the future. How would this work in the best way, of course? And, um, but uh, leveling up, uh, not only, you know, going, going abroad, but, you know, making sure that we have a good soft landing in the Swedish landscape, that's very important for the future. So, so we haven't discussed so much about the international aspect. Uh, we mentioned some international trips, journeys, uh, but you, Anna, uh, are in uh, Paris right now. But Vinova has some uh, countries that are, we are working closely with both journeys for uh, the system and also the startup scale-ups uh, together with Ignite, for one example. Do you want to mention some of the international uh, focus areas that you have Anna, at Vinova? Well, uh, Vinova covers a lot. Uh, well, I can start off with saying that Vinova has an office in Silicon Valley. That is, of course, a very important uh, place. It gives us the opportunity to develop networks that are really essential for us in Sweden. And uh, the United States is, of course, uh, one of the prioritized countries. And uh, uh, what, what, would, what we have, uh, for example, are programs that are made available not only uh, in relation to the incubator program, but broader than that, and that are programs called Think and Reach. And if you're interested, you can always find more information about that on the Vinova's website. And uh, we see that it's, 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 of course, important to create mechanisms to come out in the world and, and get input to your businesses early on. Uh, and that can happen in various ways. And um, 
I perhaps can pass on the uh, uh, to Katarina that I know has experience about working in different ways to have international connections to the companies. And Katarina, would what would you say is any um, uh, challenges? I mean, you just recently uh, done this with having a startup in an accelerator in at the Ber Berkeley. Uh, what would you say? Was it any challenges uh, that you saw from that? Uh, in this case, it was uh, for, for for the startup uh, in this. Uh, this particular one, it was great. Of course, it's a challenge. You have to be able to, to live there for three months and you have to have a, the money for doing that. But for them at the stage where they are, it was just the perfect fit. And with that said, I think that's the important thing that we need to think about. It's not for everyone. Uh, so we need to tailor made both when should we send them and who will we send. And for me personally, I have my job because I really like building companies, creating more Swedish tax money. I, I, I love to create Swedish companies. And of course, it's a challenge sending over companies to Berkeley Skydeck. Uh, they they could end up being a, a US company. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to discuss that uh, mm -hmm. for sure. And I think that's really an important discussion as well. And uh, the timing is also really, of course, uh, crucial here. Uh, and uh, your programs that you mentioned, Anna, is something that we in the National Incubation Program are aware of all the time. And uh, the business developer should know when and how to send them. Uh, it's, it's about starting to plan this ahead. It's not something that you just go on on a journey and do that uh, really easy. Uh, I think we have another really interesting example that happened the opposite when Vinova funded uh, some startups doing Ignite matchmaking in Canada. And uh, there was this Canada Canadian startup who actually thought that this is a really great opportunity to be a part of this matchmaking and ended up moving to Karlstad and sting uh, innovation. Uh, so, so that's really another story about the matchmaking that we did in Canada actually had a startup moving to Sweden uh, and being a part of one of the incubators. So that's, that's, it's happening in different directions. And in the digital world, we also had two other companies actually from the journey, the trip we did to, to Silicon Valley that joined another program, but digitally. So they are still yeah. in Lean Shopping uh but got really really good experience from being part of of the digital program that they had at UCSF as it was in that time so you don't need to move every every single mm -hmm. time but i think uh one really important thing to try to start to summarize this is that we really need to know what is happening. Sharing is caring. We don't want to reinvent the wheel doing the same thing. If we're doing a journey, who could tag along? If we're doing a project, can we join forces to learn from each other? Uh, and also that Vinova, who is funding you, are really a part of these journeys. You you see what's happening. You're really in the forefront, I feel. Uh, so, so that's also really an important part of it, that it creates a really tight ecosystem uh, with a lot of trust. Uh, it's kind of that we have uh, uh, colleagues all over Sweden that you just can call. Uh, but we have one more question in the chat uh, from Jenny. Uh, to you, Anna, uh, is Vinova also supporting the Singapore Nordic Innovation House staff question? Um, and the question was more specifically, uh about the Singapore uh, Nordic Innovation House, if you are uh, financing it, supporting it in some way. Financing and supporting in some way, yes. Uh, like if we have st staff there, yes, I see the question now. We don't have any staff uh, present in Singapore. And uh, we do collaborate with uh, Business Sweden that have a staff in Singapore. And uh, also we, uh, we are um, having, um, collaborations uh, in connection to Nordic Innovation House, but not any staff at the moment, no. Hmm. 
But just to try to summarize the, the discussion here about the excellent uh, national incubator program in Sweden, I mean, uh, the Canadian startups was one example of some programs that are really targeted. This was the forest area. Uh, and uh, we have incubators, as you mentioned, Anna, the picture of the one that are really niched, uh, but we also have wide incubators uh, that are more general. Uh, but it's always open for discussion, for collaboration. I think that's important. And we are about to do international peer reviews, peer learnings right now. So uh, Katarina, you have uh, started conversation uh, to have an international peer learning, peer review. Can you tell us just a few words about that? Yeah, and I have actually already been to one. Uh, I was down in, in Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, where they were really open and uh, sharing is caring was really up for discussion there. Uh, so we took a lot with us home from that trip and uh, we will go out to probably two other countries uh, shortly here to, to visit more or less, mostly with focus native Diana at this time for us, but uh, yeah, it gives a lot. Mm. Mm. And uh, we, in our turn, we can also send that back to the CISP community. That's really the good thing. I know that we are sharing a, a lunch seminar around Berkeley Skydeck and lessons learned from that. So that's again, mm. this sharing is caring. And I mm. was smiling when you said about uh, hello tomorrow. We have actually a couple of companies there, but we as lead, we are not there, but we are feeling perfect. You can join the Swedish booth and you have other incubators that will take care of you if you need something. So that's really great. Mm. 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 I think that's an amazing feeling. Uh, and uh, I will also highlight that uh, we are doing New York uh, as an interesting international peer review. And hopefully we can share that. Uh, it will be in May. And we also have Mink in Malmö who is doing an international peer review. I know, Katarina, that you are running to our, your next session at Sweden Innovation Days. Uh, so uh, we will try to sum it up and if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask us thank you so much Katarina for joining but my final question will be to you Anna then uh, if you feel like uh, what's the next step if you could have any call to action to maybe some uh, that are listening from the Swedish innovation ecosystem maybe outside the national incubation program or uh, from another country uh, how to collaborate what's the next step what do you see like this is what we need at Vinova to take the next step a difficult question you can answer it you can just try to find any call to action that you you would like to have what's in your e email inbox tomorrow uh, well, in relation to the National Incubator Programme, I think next step is really to integrate the international perspectives more into the processes. And we have uh, here in this session, a few examples has been mentioned that are the some uh, seeds and uh, to develop further for taking next step. So connecting international, national and regional levels even more tightly. That's the that's how we will work in the future. That is one example. I think that is very important to create a strength and uh, also a growth in Sweden. Thank you, I agree. And uh, I would like to add that we also have some collaboration and we have Enterprise Europe Network that we work, work closely with. Uh, we have Business Sweden, as you mentioned, we have some uh, other actors that we work closely with, but if there is anyone out there that already has uh, projects, uh, things going on that the Swedish startups and scale up could be uh, having a really nice, uh, maybe new customers, new finances, let us know. Uh, reach out. Uh, it's just to ask a question is this interesting? And you can reach out to CISP. Uh, the association to me or my colleague Jonas uh, or to Vinova if you have any ideas or questions. Um, I think we want to, we really want to create value for the Swedish startups and scale-ups in ways. 
So with that said, uh, we don't have any more final questions. Any final words from you, Anna? Or are you feeling ready to go out to Hello Tomorrow again? I will go back to Hello Tomorrow. And I would like to say thank you, everybody, for listening into this session. And have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much, Anna. And thank you all for listening in. And if you have any question, uh, just let me know. And uh, give us some more. Thank you so much for the applause, Magnus. Uh, have an amazing day, everyone, and looking forward to connect to you in some way. Bye-bye.